I'm calling from the trip. I'd like to confirm a quote. Getting around in two hours. You come by Brooklyn. How much money was involved? Was it over a thousand dollars? Was it over ten thousand dollars? came directly from the airport. How's it look? It's a mess in there, Mr. Davidson, a real mess. What about injuries? Radio said two men were hurt? Yeah, second degree burns. Too early to tell. They were within 10 feet from the blast. Oh. Any idea what caused it? Not yet. How was New York? Oh, well, nobody end of the week. Damn. He's probably going to be all over the 6 o'clock news. Keep me up to date on those two men. Will do. Back off, would you? Please. A little more. Thanks. Let's go. I guess we better talk to these people, huh? Yeah, look, I understand these guys. Let me handle them. That's what you're paying me for, okay? Right. Thanks, Rick. See, they get what they need. I'll check out the damage. Right. Ah, Rick Havens, media liaison for electronics. Joe Rossi, Tribune. Yeah, I'll call us in. I'll meet you at the car. Be there in a minute. Do you have a damage estimate yet? Place looks pretty well gutted. Fire department estimates loss at over a million. Oh, yeah, I'd say it's more than that. How much more? Well, I really couldn't say until the insurance boys go through it. Just the ballpark figure. Uh, I really couldn't say. I mean, there's too many factors to consider. Units lost in production, how much gear is salvageable, how much we'll lose depending upon how long we're shut down. This division handles stereo components, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. But uh, Calatronics is highly diversified. They shouldn't be too badly hurt by this. Do you have uh, the ID on the injured workers? Well, we're trying to notify the families first, you understand. You'll get to them first. Story doesn't come out in the streets till tomorrow. Look, I can always check with the hospital for the names. I'm sure you can. Look, if you uh, need anything else, don't hesitate to call. Oh, and say hi to Adam Wilson for me. I helped him out in the story not too long ago. He should be able to give you all the background on this you need. Nice talking to you, Joe. Hi, Billy. Hi, Hal. Working on anything interesting? Oh, just a dumb story about a parrot. Did you run out of new column ideas? I ran out of new column ideas in June, 1963. How about an African gray at the animal shelter? Nobody wants him because the only things he says are words we can't print. <laughs> I've done parrots. And I must have done a dozen columns on obscenity. Sounds like my kind of bird, though. Thanks, anyway. <laughs> Is that Adam's story? Adam wrote a funny story. It's his expense account. I love how the only conferences he goes to are at plush resorts. Even puts ski lessons down. His most creative writing goes into his expense account. Tell you that. Need more time, Lou. I'm getting stonewalled. You got the story, haven't you? What's the big deal about a fire? 
I have a funny feeling about these guys. Rick Davis is their flat. I never trusted him since he covered business for Channel 10. You think they're trying to hide something? These big companies are always hiding something. I think there's more to it than just a simple fire. They wouldn't be so evasive. I can't even get the names of the guys in here. Okay, send Animo back in and stick with it. You can take a cab back. Dilly, what are you working on? Dirty old parent who deserves to be locked up. It'll keep. Check the clips on Calectronics Industry. See what you can find on the fire they had at the plant today. Did you find anything yet? You know as much as we do at this point. There's an explosion in the assembly area, and uh, the whole building was involved in minutes. That's it? Oh, it was one hell of an explosion. It's very scientific. Come on, Richardson. Your unit doesn't usually show up unless there's a possibility of us. Just routine, Joe. It may not be us. When you say it may not be, do you mean... Forget it, Joe. I know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to do a story is what I'm trying to do. Look, I'll file a report soon. If I make an extra copy for you, will you stop shadowing me? I've got time to shadow you. Hey, Richardson, how about a lift downtown? Keep me informed on the fire stuff. It looks like it's the only thing we have to lead with. Right, the rest is due back any minute. Yeah. Charlie. Uh, yeah, I'll wait. Uh, I'm a little dry on column material. Need some jet. <laughs> There's new stuff going on all the time. What's your problem? You've been writing a daily column as long as I have. Nothing's new. Have you tried just relaxing and giving the thoughts from your subconscious a chance to bubble up? I don't want to hear from my subconscious. What'd you do, Rossi? Cover the fire or fight it? That's nice. I ruined a brand new pair of shoes slogging around for a story, and that's the thanks I get. It's amazing how whenever a reporter ruins a pair of shoes covering an assignment, they're always brand new. I got enough for a fire story, but I know there's more there. I just don't trust these big companies. Well, good reason. What'd you find in the clips, Billy? Very dapper. You must have a date. But just one item on the plant itself. Last year, the fire department cited Calatronics for 12 safety violations. I knew they were hiding something. There's an article from a month ago about a Lester Sorensen. He was general manager of the company for years, and then he just up and quit. It took everybody by surprise because he'd just been named the company president. It says here, Russell Davidson took his place. Some young hotshot out of New York. Adam did the story. It's a little uncooked. Figures. Adam. What can you tell us about Calectronics and this Davidson thing? Looks like you wrote this story from a press release. Hold on a minute. Though I built this story, I'm talking to everybody I could. If you look, you'll notice we were the only paper that had the story of Davidson's appointment before it happened. Okay, but why did it happen? As near as I can tell, the old man, Sorensen, wanted to retire. It's just a case of a company deciding to go with young leadership. So what do we really know about Calectronics? Well, they used to be a pretty healthy company. Imports have cut their share of the market, but uh, their management is stable, reasonably progressive. I get the picture. You never met a company you didn't like, right? According to the clips, the plant was cited for 12 safety violations last year. What about that? Yeah. Could this be a convenient fire or the result of negligence? Oh, I doubt it. Cal Electronics has always been a pretty straight outfit. Okay. Billy, contact the company. Get an interview with Davidson. Rossi, we'll go with what you've got, but follow up on it. You know we'd find some on these guys. Rossi, you see conspiracies everywhere. Yeah, and sometimes I find them. Adam, I don't want to bring this up in front of everybody else, but your story on a change of command wasn't very complete. I got what I could. The prime rate was going through the roof. I had all those stories on how the election would affect business. How about the old guy who retired, Sorensen? Sorensen was gone. The new guy hadn't come in yet. Lou, I don't always have time to be as thorough as I'd like to be. We did elect a new president, remember? Big kid, just to live in the Palisades. Look, if you want me to go back and get more, I'll go back and get more. No, that's okay. Bossy and Billy can handle it. You have a lot to do. Whatever you say. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E.
a company this size, everything can't filter through this office. It has to be split up. You mean decentralized, free the slaves? Right. By the first of the month, I want to break the company up into four divisions, each with its own general manager. Yes. Ask her to wait a minute, please. What? Sorry to break this up, but I promised to talk to a reporter from the trip about the fire. Oh, we don't have much to tell yet. We haven't gotten the investigator's report. Then I'll just tell her the truth. Why don't you let me take this? I don't trust reporters from the trip, especially after the shot that guy Rossi took at us. Well, give her what you can. We still can't afford to alienate the press. Hello, Miss Newman. I'm Russell Davidson. This is Rick Haydens in charge of communications. Hi. I'm pleased to meet you. I'm sorry about the circumstances. Yes. I've had a meeting come up that I just can't avoid, and Rick here can give you whatever you need. Use my office. I hope you can come back when we have more time. Of course. Well, shall we? Oh, would you like some coffee? No, thanks. How can I help? Do you have a cause of the fire yet? Now, we expect a report tomorrow. When is your deadline? Oh, I need it by 6 to 9. Oh, why don't you give me a call then? I may have something for you. Oh, by the way, I have the names and uh, medical reports on those two workers. Thank you. We already got the details from the hospital. You know, I was uh, really disappointed in Mr. Rossi's story. The safety violations were a cheap shot. Couldn't they have caused the fire? No way. I mean, they were all minor, and we corrected them immediately at the time. I'll tell him. Uh, is the fire a serious setback? When do you expect to resume production? We don't know yet. Have you been covering business long, Miss Newman? Actually, I'm a general assignment reporter. I see. The manufacture of stereo components is only one of the things that we do. Uh, Calectronics is into fiber optics, solar applications. I'm sure uh... that's the case. But getting back to the fire itself, there is a question of possible negligence. Or some might see it as beneficial. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I mean, that's an unfair accusation. I suggest you wait till the full report is out. Okay, what can you give me on the damage estimate? Nothing yet. We don't know how much equipment needs replacing. You're not being very helpful, Mr. Havens. I'm afraid Calectronics is going to look bad in our story. I can't give you what I don't have. Why did Mr. Sorensen resign? I went over all that with Adam Wilson. Mr. Sorensen retired for personal reasons. He wanted to enjoy life. Uh, some people do. I guess I couldn't do it here. Hmm. And what about the injured workers? They should know what happened. I tried to contact them. Zip. They refused to talk to the press. That's interesting. It's not that I doubt you on this, but we just have to be very sure. Do you have a chance to read Billy's story? I think it'll cause trouble. It implies the company is being secretive. The company is being secretive. We're saying we have nothing new on the cause of the fire, nothing new on Sorensen's resignation. Why don't we just wait until we have something? Because it's news, Adam. It's perishable. So is the company's reputation. And what about this? The company denied that negligence was a possible cause, claiming that safety violations had been corrected. It's accurate. It's slanted. Okay, that's enough. We'll go with the story. It's misleading. We'll go with it. After you read it to them and give Kelectronics a chance to respond. Fair? But it's important that I speak with Mr. Havens. Right. He's still in the same meeting? Well, has he gotten my other messages? He has. Well, that's all I needed to know. Thank you. Any luck? Well, I called three times. He's ducking me. Maybe he's out. He's in. He got his messages. Okay. Let's go over what we've got. They've had their chance. For you, maybe. I already got a call from Rick Havens at home at 6.30. He's unhappy. Should have called yesterday. Had his chance. Don't worry. The more they complain, the more we know we're on the right track. You could be wrong on this. Negligence is still a possible cause of the fire until there's evidence to the contrary. Excuse me. Joe, this just came by messenger. Figured it might be important. Thanks, Leon. It's a report from my arts investigator, buddy. Well... It was an accident. 
The explosion was caused by ruptured gas mains, which were weakened by recent road repair. According to this, the city is responsible. The electronics is in the clear. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. This will be in the courts for years. Maybe somebody in the company got to the investigator. I thought he was your buddy. Yeah, up to a point. Well, it just kills you to find out that big business isn't guilty of something, doesn't it? Come on, the story's over. Admit you were wrong. I'm still not satisfied with the way the company's handling this. Billy, I guess you better start working on your correction. Correction? The story was right as far as we knew at the time. This report is just new information. I don't care what you call it. I just think you better start working on it. Bossy, see if you can get to Sorensen. Try to find out why a man retires five minutes after he's named company president. <laughs> Anything interesting coming in off the wires? This is interesting. Tension mounting in his track at Red Canyon Paper Mills up north. Yeah, so? Well, that's one of the mills that the Tribune owns. Want to put it on the budget? No, nah, don't bother. Who cares about a fiddly little labor dispute more than a thousand miles away? <laughs> Another one of Adam's expense accounts? No, it's Al Haneker's column. He tells how an environmental rally protesting a power plant left a half a ton of garbage littering the park. Funny stuff. Gimme. I can use a laugh. Okay, if I join you? Mm. Oh, sure. Well, I'm just playing a role. How are things done in advertising? Well, sometimes you make it a little sticky for us, but we do okay. What do you mean, sticky? Well, I don't mean to uh, make a big deal out of it, but a lot of people seem to feel that the uh, Trib has been running roughshod over Cal Electronics. We just report the news, Maris. We don't make it. Well, I'm not looking for a fine, but what gives? I mean, the company spends a lot of money with us. They've been a major employer around here for nearly 30 years. Oh, I see. You think we should give special treatment to the people who support the trip? You'd rather we give special treatment to people who oppose the trip? If that's what it takes to be fair, yeah. Our news columns aren't for sale. We gave Cal Electronics plenty of chances to tell their side of the story. I think what we did to that company stinks. Write a letter to the editor. I wonder if the trip could take the kind of investigation we dish out. You can bet on it, Maris. So whenever I've taken on a new position, I'm reminded of that classic proverb from Vietnam. The light at the end of the tunnel is probably the headlamp of an oncoming train. <laughs> Would it be an intrusion? <laughs> I'm glad to see you two enjoying yourselves. We are. <laughs> but let's hit the chow line. To tell you the truth, Russell and I have been so busy talking, we've not even gone beyond first names. Oh, I'm sorry, Margaret. This is Russell Davidson. I've known his family since New York. Margaret, Finchon, Russell's just taken over Cal Electronics. It's keeping me busy. What do you do, Margaret? Oh, Margaret delivers newspapers for a living. Oh, she must have a good route. <laughs> Actually, she owns the Tribune. Hi. I'm glad we met. But I do think the Tribune is a fine newspaper. What I don't understand is why it insists on picking on big corporations. Big corporations can take care of themselves. I knew it was a good idea bringing you two together. Actually, I don't think the Tribune picks on anybody. Undeservedly. Well, maybe I'm being sensitive, but you do run many pieces criticizing business, and the Tribune itself is one of the biggest corporations in California. Our financial reporters treat the Tribune Corporation the same way they treat any other large business. Really? I understand there's a bitter strike involving one of your paper mills in Washington. I've seen nothing on it in the Trib. Well, I don't think people are interested in a labor dispute that far away from home. How is it the Times ran a story on it? The same with one of the TV stations. They obviously feel people are interested. Russell, Margaret, come on, you guys. Let's talk about something non-controversial, like, um, busing. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, have we been fair? Or has the Tribune gone too far in its coverage of the Calectronics fire? You can see we gave good play to the story, denying that the fire may have been caused by negligence. That should satisfy them. I'm not so sure. They have only themselves to blame. 
The way they handle things after the fire, refusing to cooperate, give out information, they act guilty. Right. When things go wrong, it's easier to blame the press instead of themselves. Excuse me. Yes. I'll take it. Oh, this shouldn't take long. This is Margaret Pinchon. I see. The truck drivers, too? Or have we been able to get any paper out at all? I understand. We're going to have to make other arrangements before the strike spreads. Call me again when you have some cheerful news. Come on, Adam. I know you didn't buy me lunch just to find out about my family. I want to know about Cal Electronics. So that's it. Trips slapped them around pretty good, I'd say. How come I haven't seen your byline? You might say I've been slapped around a bit myself. But why ask me about Cal Electronics? I work for Braswell. This Cal Electronics tried to buy Braswell a couple of years ago. And they had to have passed on a lot of internal information to you. That isn't stuff we can just give out. Why do you want it? You looking to pin something on them? No, not really. I don't like a lot of the stuff that's appeared in the trip either, but if I'm going to argue about it, I need some ammunition. You know? We had to return all that background information. Are you trying to tell me you didn't make copies? Only about three file drawers full. They're in my office. Am I going to get to see them? I suppose so. But you're sure getting a lot for an ice cream cone. It's imaginative, but I'm not sure the banks will go for it, especially with the media on our backs. Yeah, well, I think we ought to fight fire with fire. We ought to start our own ad campaign. I don't think that'll help us get a loan. Well, something has to, because without the banks, we can kiss the consumer products division goodbye. We'd have to sell. I don't want to do that. Well, let's not forget those guys from the National News Watch show. They want an interview. We could use it to our advantage. I want to think more about that. I'm not sure you're ever at an advantage when it's their show. <laughs> Russell, you turn them down, and you've got 30 million people hearing Calectronic saying, no comment. And that could sound sinister. Yes. I'll be right there. Gentlemen, you're going to have to excuse me for a few minutes. I really have to talk to this lady from the Tribune. Hello, Miss Newman. Please, come in. Thank you. Oh, hi again. If you need me, I'll be in my office. Okay. Dylan, hold all calls except New York. Sit down, please. To be honest, Mr. Davidson, I wasn't sure I'd be welcome. I think we got off on the wrong foot. Let's start over, and this time I'll answer any questions you have. Fair enough. Why don't we begin by you explaining your position as you see it? What is the biggest problem you face? Age. No, not me, not yet, anyway. But our plants are old, out of step with the times. That's not just us either. The same goes for American industry in general. The plants that taught the world how to produce are ready for the scrap heap. Excuse me. Yes. Would you mind waiting outside a minute? Oh, no problem. Davidson here. I see. No, I'd rather hear it straight. You're sure you've checked all the major lenders and... No, I know the publicity hasn't helped. I think you've summed it up rather well. Thank you. Okay, send Miss Newman back in. I just have a few more questions. Um, does your progressive approach to running this business have anything to do with Mr. Sorensen's retirement? Sort of a change in corporate thinking. My hiring has nothing to do with Mr. Sorensen. We try to explain things to you, and you insist on coming back with the same suspicions. I didn't mean it that way. I just... Look, I'm sorry. Something's come up. Can we do this another time? I just need another minute. You've had too many minutes already.
Rick, we lost the damn loan. You were right. The only defense against the press is a good offense. So call the national news, watch people, and tell them we'll do the interview. Then get in here. We've got work to do. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Take your time, but try and keep your answers short. I'll be okay. I think we've gone over every possible question he could ask. Just try to relax, Mr. Davidson. You can take all the time you want. Make your answers as long as you like. The film's cheap. Besides that, we're paying for it. I'm ready when you are, Gary. Crazy weather we're having. It's not bad. Could be a lot worse. I used to live in New Jersey. It's a lot better than the winters in New Jersey. I used to travel back east a lot before I retired. Dreadful weather this time of year. Except Christmas. I always loved New York during Christmas. Me too. I'm Joe Rossi. Glester Sorensen. I'm with the Los Angeles Tribune. Could I talk to you a minute? I assume it's not about the weather. No. No. Would you mind telling me why you left Cal Electronics? That's none of your business. Mr. Sorensen, we heard the company had some financial difficulties. Were they using you as a scapegoat? I have no comment, Mr. Rossi. Come on, back. Mr. Davidson, you're an expert. You're a highly qualified man. Tell us, what is the basic problem with American business? Our plants are outdated. Without modernization, we're dead in the world market. But other countries have managed to modernize. Germany, Japan, for instance. Well, after World War II, they rebuilt their industries from the ground up. So you're saying, in effect, that they won the war, Germany and Japan? Well, the industrial war. With our help, yes. Let's pretend for a moment that you are not the president of Cal Electronics, but you have a chance to buy it. Would you do it? Uh, the price were right. I think I'd be delighted to buy Cal Electronics. Really? A corporation that's just posted staggering losses? A corporation whose equipment is hopelessly outdated? We're talking about a company that's just had a disastrous fire. It's been cited by the fire department for a dozen safety violations. Gary, those accusations are misleading. And you've been losing ground to the imports. Now, how do we know that Cal Electronics won't just belly up in a year? Well, don't sell Cal Electronics short. We're making a strong comeback, and we fully intend to become a leader in our field again. Is this part of your comeback? As you can see, we've set up two stereo amplifiers. They seem almost identical in every detail, but one is made by your company, the other's from Japan. Now, what is the real difference? Well, the Japanese stereo doesn't have the same high-range capabilities. But it sells for $60 less. Well, we can't touch that price, but you get what you pay for. With theirs, you pay a lot less. Now, why is that? They have the support of their government, and they're willing to sell to the U.S. at a loss for years, if necessary, to create demand. Is the high cost of U.S. labor a major part of the blame? U.S. workers earn the highest wages in the world. They also deserve them. But labor always wants more money. And why not? Inflation hits the workers harder than the guys in the boardroom. We've got a problem. Well, this is a newsletter for utility companies. It's a funny article about environmentalists who left a half a ton of litter at a rally against a power plant. Does that sound familiar? So, Hal sold a freelance piece off his column. So what? This is the pre-written column that they send out for the weekly shoppers and throwaways. Al! Come here a minute. I'm late, Lou. Can I wait? Now! What's the problem? You're the problem. You took a pre-packaged column written by a power company publicist and ran it under your byline. 
Okay, so it's a big deal. It was a press release and I released it. We pay it a right, not open mail. We can't use every puff piece of company census. I don't use every piece. I'm very selective. Then select your own ideas. If that column you turned in for tomorrow is another handout, you can pack up. It's okay. It's in my own writing. I just forgot to proof it. I found Sorensen, but he won't talk. He was very hostile. He's not the only one. There he's hiding something. Maybe the company paid him off and he had to agree to silence. Find out whatever it is. Big company like that can't keep secrets very long. Adam, what do you got? I've got a good piece on Calectronics. Another handout? Not exactly, but I got to look at a lot of their records. A few years back, one of their divisions made components that apparently led to several of their workers getting cancer. Cancer? How many? Maybe five. They traced the cause back to a chemical used in one stage of the manufacturing and replaced it with a safe one. But they never made it public? The workers were compensated, but I have memos warning of the need for no publicity. I wasn't on the budget. I'd like it for first edition. Well, I didn't think I'd have time to check with them. I haven't been able to reach Calectronics for a reaction. Stay with it. I want it for tonight. Hello? Thanks, well. Just an update on the strike at Red Canyon Paper Mill. According to this, the strike may spread to other mills. If it does, we'll take another look. Yeah, that's your door. And we also think there's a good possibility that we can arrange a stock issue. Thanks. So what do you think? You think the plan will work? Of course it'll work. You don't need me to tell you that. I value your opinion, Les. I wouldn't be here without your help. Don't be so quick to thank me. You may live to regret taking the job. Not a chance. I'm serious. The press has been hard on you, especially the Tribune. That negative publicity could wreck everything you're trying to do. I can handle the press. We've already got a couple of things in the works. Don't worry about it. But I do worry about it. When I think how I'm responsible for the company's nearly going under. Les, it's not your fault. Of course it is. You know, a Tribune reporter tried to interview me today. I wouldn't talk to him, but maybe I should. It's time we explained why I left. That was a fine story Adam cranked out on the cancer victims of Calvinatronics. What sort of response have we had? A lot of calls from readers wanting to know more. People are afraid they've been exposed to the same chemicals. I'd feel better if we could have gotten a reaction from the company before we ran with it. Adam tried to reach them. They won't take our calls. That's their problem. Hi, Glenn. Come on in. What do you got? Trouble. Your personal copy? Here's your reaction, Charlie. Electronics taking out an ad in the trip. But it's not to sell stereo equipment. It's to attack us. They're so obviously looking for revenge. That's pretty expensive revenge. They've scheduled an ad this size twice a week for a solid month. Maybe they figure they have nothing to lose. Maybe they figure they've got something to gain, like that loan they want. Maybe it's the only way they can tell their side of the story. I'm warning you, Charlie. The way we've treated that company is making a lot of people in the business community furious. That's my problem, Glenn. Not yours. Fine, I'll transfer all the complaints to you. You can explain our position. I'm tired of apologizing for it. Oh, you saw the ad. Isn't it great? You think that's great? Yeah, they mentioned my name. Must mean I haven't scared. No way it's a tribute. Mm -hmm. Can I get this? Oh, be my guess. Mr. Grant, have you seen this? I figure they're trying to intimidate us. You know, circumvent the press by going directly to people. This is not circumvention. It is not even intimidation. This is an act of war. Lee Grant. We'll continue in a moment here on a and Cancer cover-up. Calectronics workers hit. <laughs> this isn't a newspaper. It's a scandal sheet. It's inexcusable. It's absolutely inexcusable. Where could they have gotten this? That's a good question. It's going to take a long time to trace that leak. It's a good thing you started the ads today. It looks like we're fighting back. Yeah, you know what gets me is the headline. The trip makes it sound like uh, thousands of our workers are involved instead of just a few in one small department. It's absolutely misleading. Use that. Use that in the ads. Yeah, I've already started a rough draft. Boy, they are really getting arrogant. I can't believe they didn't give us a chance to respond. Oh, they called. They called. One of the 
the reporters called after six, Adam Wilson. I got the message this morning when it was too late. The real kicker is that there is not much we can do. The facts are there, but everything is slanted to put us in the worst possible light. Sure, you uh, run a newspaper and you're home free. Run a business and you're a target. Get me Margaret Pinchon at the Tribune. If she's not in, find her. This is Margaret Pinchon. I want a meeting with you. What a coincidence, Mr. Davidson, because I certainly want to have a meeting with you. But other countries have managed to modernize. Germany, Japan, for instance. Yes, but after World War II, they rebuilt their industries from the ground up. Our plants are hopelessly outdated. Without modernization, we're dead in the world market. Boy, they fixed them a fat one you could knock right out of the park. So in a sense, you're saying that they won the war. With our help, yes. They've chopped this up with editing. I don't like it. Mr. Davidson, let's pretend for a moment that you are not the president of Cal Electronics, but you have the chance to buy it. Now, would you do it? I think if the price were right, I'd be delighted to buy Cal Electronics. He's really squirming. You can just tell what a crook the guy is. Look at him sweating. He sweat too under those lights. Notice how they always show a much more flattering shot of Hall. Really? A corporation that's just posted staggering losses? A corporation whose equipment is hopelessly outdated? Gary, it those really accusations are galls me to see him get away with this. We're talking about a company that's just had a disastrous fire. We've been cited by the fire department for a dozen safety violations. I think we're making a strong comeback and we have every intention of becoming a leader in our field again. Is this part of your comeback? As you can see, we've set up two stereo amplifiers. They seem to be almost identical in every detail. But one was made by your company, and the other's from Japan. Now, what's the real difference? The Japanese system doesn't have the same high-range capabilities. But it costs $60 less. Well, we can't touch that price. Is the high cost of U.S. labor a major part of the problem? U.S. workers earn the highest wages in the world. But labor always wants more money. And why not? It's... This just came in. Figured you'd want to see it. Thanks. Something on the Davidson interview? No, we've got our own troubles. There was another big demonstration at the Red Canyon paper mill. Two men were killed in the melee. You better call Mrs. Pinchot at home. They're a highly qualified man. Mr. Sorensen, I was really surprised you called. I wanted to call you earlier. Russell. Russell Davidson advised against it. Somehow I'm not surprised. Perhaps you will be. You want to know why I left the company, Mr. Rossi? I suspect by now you've imagined all sorts of scenarios. Political squeeze plays, scandals, embezzlement. We usually figure there's more to the story than the company lets on. A man doesn't spend a chunk of his life moving up the ladder, getting named president, and suddenly retire. You had a lot invested. Ooh. In all the wrong things. So one day you just chucked it? That's a little hard to buy. Have you ever come up against your own limitations. What do you mean? It happened at a board meeting. One moment I found myself listening to a report on the comparative costs of model changeovers. And the next, I found myself crying. I didn't even know why it was happening to me then. The other board members didn't know what to do. The man reading the report was embarrassed. <laughs> he just kept on reading. I found myself feeling sorry for them. But I could not stop crying. I broke down, Mr. Rossi. Like an old, worn-out heart. I understand. Pressures and all. Well, why did they discard you? No, you don't understand. They wanted me back. But I discovered I didn't need this in my life anymore. What do you need? What will you do now? I go back to work for the company, but on a limited basis, with less responsibility, less, less pressure. Why was the company so secretive? Why didn't Davidson just explain what happened to you and get it over with? Because Russell Davidson is a decent man. 
Remember, tomorrow we have the suburban section, so deadlines are an hour early. Plus, it's ending for page one. We got that thing on the Red Canyon strike. I don't know. A brief, maybe. Come on, Charlie. Two deaths. The DA up there is preparing murder charges. I don't think we can ignore it. Not unless we want to give Calictronics ad campaign more ammunition. All right, we'll put it inside. Make sure that the trip's ownership of the mill is up near the lead and hold it to 300 words. What else? Just one story from Metro you might want. Rossi's piece on Sorensen, analyzing the breakdown of a company and a man. Good piece. Thorough and sympathetic. Good enough for page one? I think so. And that's where it sits. Below the fold. Come in, gentlemen. This is Mr. Davidson. He has some reservations about the Sorensen article. I don't have any reservations, Mrs. Pinchon. I think it was unfair and cheap and destructive. Wait a second. That story had a lot of relevance. Why did it end up on page one? Because it was humiliating gossip. It was news when Sorensen joined Calectronics. It was news when his contributions added to the success of the company. It was news when he and the company got in trouble. There is a difference between reporting the news and sensationalizing it. Mr. Davidson, a good newspaper tells the reader who, what, where, when, and why. Unfortunately, Mr. Sorensen was the why, which is the toughest part of any story. Speaking of why, why have you downplayed this story about violence at one of your own mills? We have not downplayed that. We ran a story today. I noticed. It's page 23. The ad for tummy flatteners got better position and more space. It isn't exactly a local story. Then why do you banner every development in a strike in Poland half a world away? Two men died at Red Canyon Paper Mills, which is only a thousand miles from here and owned by the Trib. You're right. It was a bad call. First we ignored the story, then we downplayed it. Well, maybe we were too sensitive about our own involvement to be really objective. Oh. <laughs> when you make a mistake, it's a bad call? When we make one, you hang us out to dry. Now, what am I supposed to do? Call your readers on the phone and say there was an error in the story? You guys try to blame everything on the media. Imports are threatening. The quality of goods and services deteriorates. You have national recalls. <laughs> and somehow it's our fault. Well, I don't buy that. I blame you for sacrificing accuracy for speed, yes. And what about that cancer story? You made it seem as though all Calectronics workers were affected, not just five. Was the story accurate? Gentlemen, please. Are we here to discuss our problems or to aggravate them? Mr. Davidson, what do you want from us? I want a little more consideration. We're tired of constantly reading that American business is second rate, that we we're riddled with inefficiency. You print that often enough and you make it come true. We'll try to be sensitive to your needs. But you'll be sensitive to ours. You try to come up with the information that we need. Don't duck us. Don't treat us as though we were not entitled to know. And then we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You work on being accurate, and we won't need the benefit of the doubt. I saw your memo about cutting house column down to twice a week. You got off easy. You may be right. But it gives me a chance to try out something that I've been thinking about. Yeah. We're, we're going to use guest columns occasionally by leaders in business and government industry. Oh, let them air their views, huh? Yeah. What bothers me is I don't know if it's a good idea or if I'm overreacting to all that pressure from Calectronics, you know, bending over backwards. Relax. I think of bending over backwards now and then is pretty good exercise for a newspaper. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the press, I'll try to make this brief. Calectronics Industries is announcing today plans to sell its West Coast Consumer Products Division. This action is being taken to enable us to retool to allow us to meet market demands immediately. Yes. Will the sale of the Consumer Products Division cover the expansion costs? I wish. No. We had to negotiate a $15 million loan. And we expect to announce a new stock issue to complete capitalization. How will it feel to run a smaller company than you're used to? I prefer to think of it as leaner, tougher. 
Can you give us the details on your new loan? What did you use for collateral? Well, there was my car. <laughs> and my mother's car. <laughs> and my mother. <laughs> the details are in your press kits, which we have ready for you. Is this news conference indicative of a new candor with regard to the press? I hope so. We expect you to report the news of our company fairly and with insight to the public, and in return, if you think we're ducking, you don't hesitate to let us know. I don't think I have to remind the Tribune to do that, do I? Thank you. Well, Adam, what do you think? You seem pretty forthright. Answered all our questions without trying to sidestep us. I know. That's what I'm worried about. His love life had the country talking. Let's meet millionaire Donald Trump as Wealth and Power Week continues on Biography tonight. Now, a fingerprint expert gets his chance to leave his mark in a tough case. A murderer attacks the city on Police Story, next on A&E.